Hello and welcome to another video in the differentiation series for the second year of A-Level Maths. What we're looking at today is the topic of inverse functions. So up until now, really, we're used to differentiating functions that look like that and are of a nice form. But what if we get something like this? Well, for those of you who are doing further maths, you'll learn how to differentiate this in a different way. But for just normal maths, this is a little bit of a problem. So if we want to find dy by dx, this is slightly problematic. But if we think about it and we think about what differentiation actually does and how it works, this is not too bad a question. So let's have a look at it. So remember, arc sine is just different notation for inverse sine. It's notation you need to know because they may use it in the exam. And it's also in the formula book. So that's something you need to be familiar with. But it's a case of it's quite archaic in its notation. It's there because tradition and mathematicians love tradition. So how do we deal with this? Well, we don't know how to differentiate arc sine, but we do know how to differentiate sine. So we can rearrange this equation. So instead of adding, adding something to both sides or dividing by, both, by something both sides, what we're going to do is we're going to think about how we can undo inverse sine. And we do that by writing sine in front of both sides. Okay, because if we do this, remember, if f of x is sine x, then f inverse is inverse sine, which is arc sine. Key property that we're using here is that if you do the composite function of a function and its inverse, you just get back to x. So here, this is just x. So we now have the relationship x equals sine y. Sine we can differentiate, but we've got to be very, very careful. We're not here. What does the dx on the bottom means mean? Well, that means we are differentiating a y function with respect to x. So we've got a y function with x's in it. Here, we have an x function with y's in it. So we need to think about, well, we know that sine y is going to differentiate to cos y. But if we differentiate with respect to y, we've got to note, change our notation slightly. So now we have this relationship. dx by dy is cos y. But we want dy by dx because this is the gradient. This is what's useful. This is not really there. So how do we get this? Well, we can treat this like a normal fraction. So if we have dy by dx, oh sorry, dx by dy is cos y, dy by dx is 1 over cos y, which in this case is sec y. Now, this is not a hugely familiar thing to do because we're used to getting dy by dx equals some stuff with x's in. Here we have equals some stuff with y in. But depending on the information we're given, this is fine. So maybe we want to find the value of the gradient when x is a particular number. Well, that's fine. We can just stick x into here to find the y, then stick the y in here to find the gradient. And that's kind of all, it, all there is to it. The key thing is this relationship, that dy by dx 
equals 1 over dx by dy. This is a really important relationship in cases like this where you're given a function that you don't know how to differentiate or in other cases that we're going to look at now. So this is the first example we're going to look at here. Given x equals e to the y, find dy by dx. Well, we can do this in a couple of ways, but we're going to use the method we just looked at. So we know that x is e to the y. We have x as a function of y, which means we can differentiate both sides with respect to y. And we know that if we differentiate e to the y, we get e to the y. Here we have therefore dy by dx equals 1 over e to the y. And we can tidy that up if we want to to e to the minus y. This is another way to prove the derivative of ln x. We could get this exact same question in terms of the method written like this. Show that if y equals ln x, dy by dx is 1 over x. So that's what we have seen and used in a previous video. But how can we use this relationship to get here? Well, we know that if y equals ln x, that means that x equals e to the y. Because of the way inverse functions work, and e to the something is the inverse function of ln. We can now proceed this way. dx by dy equals e to the y. But the key thing to notice here is e to the y is x. And we get there. So we can very much use this method to prove derivative results that we already know. So you can see here, we're going to have a go at this question now. What I'd like you to do, though, is pause the video, have a go on your, on your own, and then come back and I'll go through it. So this question, although not particularly tricky in its own right, leads, can lead on nicely to much more difficult questions in terms of things like gradients, stationary points, that kind of thing. So we want to find the value of dy by dx at the point 2, 1 on this curve. Don't forget, this question could be written, find the value of the gradient. And the question would be exactly the same. So bear that in mind when you're working this kind of topic. dy by dx is the gradient. dx by dy is not. So we know that x equals y cubed plus y. Okay, that's what we've got. So this is a function that we cannot rearrange to get in the form y equals f of x. Okay, we can't do it, or not easily anyway. So we can't get it into that form and then differentiate like we normally would. We have to use this inverse method. Okay, so if we differentiate with respect to y, remember that means y follows our normal rules. So we end up with 3y squared plus 1. Now, very much depending on the way you want to approach this question, it's up to you. But what I would say is what I like to do generally is put numbers in first, then rearrange, unless you've been asked to find the function. So what I would say here is at the point 2, 1, dx by dy is 3 times y squared, so 1 squared plus 1, which is 4. Therefore, dy by dx is 1 over 4. 
what could we do from there? So that's that's this question done, but what extra could we do? Well, we could find equation of the tangent to the curve, because we now know the gradient. Likewise, equation of the normal. We could do things with increasing or decreasing functions. So we can say, is this function increasing or decreasing at the point 2, 1? Well, the gradient's positive, so it's increasing. That kind of thing. This is all what we did in the first year. Just the way you get the derivative is a little bit different. That's it for the inverse function portion. This kind of, in the Pearson textbook, this, is, this exercise is linked with the chain rule exercise. So you might have found some questions using this in the, if you're practicing that exercise in between the last video and this one. But otherwise, you can go away and you can practice. Thank you for watching.